Hello everyone, welcome back to ECMATH. Today we're going to talk about scientific notation, which is a topic in chapter P that's related to exponent rules. Um, I, it's a little bit of a weird fit to talk about scientific notation in a pre-calculus class, but I have a couple good reasons. One, it's a thing you should just know, and you should know how to do well by this time in your, your math career. So I don't feel okay letting you out of this classroom, not being uh, talented at scientific notation. Two, it's really good practice with your exponent rules. Um, so when do you use scientific notation? Well, it's something that we use for two reasons, I think. One is to simplify calculations using exponent rules, and the other is comparing the magnitudes or sizes of numbers easily. Um, and that's why you have to make sure things are in proper form. What do you mean by proper form? Well, scientific notation is looking at a number as a power of 10. So, for example, uh, it's always x point y to the times 10 to the z, using just general letters. Here's an example, 2.6 times 10 to the 13th. Um, here's another one, uh, 5.8 times 10 to the 14th. Now, if I had written those numbers out with all their zeros, you might have a kind of a hard, annoying time figuring out which number is larger. And even though 5 is larger than 2, we all know that the second number is larger because it has a much larger, it has a larger power of 10, and that makes the final result much larger by a factor of 10. It's 10 times more. Um, what is important, though, is that because we're using these to compare, that x always has to be a single digit, and it, and it shouldn't be 0. So here are some things that are not in scientific notation. 33.2 times 10 to the fourth. Nope, because 33 is not a single digit. Um, and 0 0.021 times 10 to the negative third. Again, there's no proper leading decimal. This is not done, even though it's in some kind of notation with exponents. It's not really scientific notation because you can't use the exponent to meaningfully compare sizes. Um, this both would better be written as these numbers right here. And by the way, this has the same meaning on your calculator. Your calculator doesn't do times 10 to the blah. It does e instead. Let me see if I can show you this. So if you pull up your 84 and you want to do 2.6 times 10 to the 13th. Oh, my, my calculator finger is tired already. But wait. Couldn't I just type this in directly, right? So 2.6 E13 is how your calculator expresses this. And your calculator has a big old button. Where is it? Let me get my cursor out. It says EE. -E. There's EE -E right there above the comma. So if I want to do 2.6 times 10 to the 13th, all I really have to do is that. And I'll give you the same meaning. Uh, so that's something that's pretty cool in your calculator. Um, students, again, often maybe you know that, but a lot of people don't know that at this point, so there's a cool new thing for you. Okay, I'm going to spend the rest of this video just doing examples. Um, so the first set of examples is going to be putting these numbers into scientific notation. Okay, so here's how you think about it. Um, this is 64,000. Point zero. So there's right now there's a decimal place right there. The decimal place is going to move. You count how many places it moves. One, two, three, four. So this is going to be 6.4. So you know that you're taking everything except the zeros and then writing it as a decimal times 10 to the however many places you move the decimal. Um, now, when these get really complicated, it, it starts to be a little tricky. Which, is this a 4 or a minus 4? The way I think about it is this. 64,000 is a big number. 6.4 is a small number. So if my uh, 64,000 is going becoming 6.4, I need to balance it out with a large power of 10 to make sure that those are equivalent. So if my number, uh, the number part gets smaller, the exponent part has to be larger, and vice versa. That also switches around. All right, uh, negative 3,829. I chose this one because it has this negative out front. A lot of people would say, aha, I know I'm going to have to have a negative exponent on the, the 10. That's not true. 
This has nothing to do with the size of the number. This is That negative is really telling you a position on a number line. There's the positive position, there's the negative position. It has nothing to do with the scientific notation part at all. So this is going to be, imagine there's a, a decimal point there. It's going to go one, two, three places over. So it's going to be negative 3.829 times 10 to the positive third because it went three places uh, over. So think about where the decimal moves, count the moves, and then you can write it in that, that notation. All right, next one. Now here I have a number less than 1, so this is going to be a, uh, a negative exponent. I need the decimal to be right here. It needs to be 8.3 times 10 to the something. And then you just count over to see what that will be. One place, two places, three places. But here's where it really helps to think about the size thing. This is a small number. This is a large number. So if I'm balancing out the small and large numbers, uh, 8.3 8 relatively large, um, we'll say bigger, then this has to be smaller by like being a negative three so that's how i would think about it i get confused i don't know this is confession i don't know my right side from my left side so when people say oh move the decimal point to the left i have to go like what huh who that's why i think about bigger and smaller i think it's better anyway mathematically um but you know just as the example and i, I wrote that even right here you want to keep your number in balance so if moving the decimal makes the uh, kind of decimal part, numerical part, smaller, the power grows larger and the same in reverse. And that way you don't ever have to think about right and left and all those other silly things that you're supposed to know about, but you don't. Um, here's another example. Uh, the rest of the examples are going to be about calculations. I said this is, you know, where things really become useful. It's good exponent practice. I will say this. Do not write out the zeros. If you do, and that's the only work you show, I'm not counting that as a solution because you haven't shown me you know any exponent rules. And to me, that's the point of these problems is demonstrating not that you, say you can muddle through a calculation like a fool, but that you know how to do it correctly. And I know what's going to happen is as soon as I say that, I'm going to make a bunch of mistakes. But uh, and please call me out if I do. But here's how you do problems like this. We have 1.4 times 10 to the 15th. We'll do, an, we'll do a bunch of these. Times 10 to the 15th times 3 times 10 to the negative 11. Now, we write this times as the x. And here, there's nothing in between. Remember, this is also a time sign. And multiplication is that thing we call associative and commutative. So you can group these numbers in a much smarter way. How about 1.4 times 3 times 10 to the 15th times 10 to the minus 11? That's a much more useful way to group these numbers up. 1.4 times 3, you, know, you can think about it for a second. Uh, that's going to be 3 times 1 is 3, and 0.4 times 3 would be uh, 1.2. So this is going to be 4.2. You can also, I guess, just do 14 times 3. Um, and then 10, so that's these together. And then 10 to the 15th and 10 to the 11th, that's going to be 10 to the 4th. So uh, 4.2 is already as a, as a proper decimal. So your final answer you can report is 4.2 times 10 to the fourth in scientific notation. And again, don't leave your don't even at this point go, uh, oh, that's 42,000. Uh, I don't care. I'm asking about scientific notation, guys. So leave it like that and be happy. But look how much easier that was than, for example, writing out the zeros. Um, here's another one where there's no way I want to write out eight zeros and five zeros. I see people try it, and they cross out the zeros, and it's lovely and great, and it's a silly way to, to solve this problem. Um, we're going to group with the fraction, each part of the fraction together. 6.9 over 3, well, 69 over 3 would be, uh, that is a number. That should be 23. So 6.9 over 3 is going to be 2.3. 10 to the 8th over 10 to the 5th, that's going to be 10 to the 3rd. So this is going to be 2.3 times 10 to the 3rd, and you're done. Don't write out the zeros. That's silly. Oh, you should check that the 2.3 is, is proper scientific notation, but in this case, it is, so you're fine. Let's keep going. 
Uh, 1.2 times 10 to the fourth over 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, so 1.2 over 2, that's going to be z uh, 0 0.6. And I see right away that I'm going to have to move that decimal place one more. And that's fine. And here I have 4 and minus 2, but remember the minus 2 is on bottom, so do this 4 minus minus 2 and get times 10 to the sixth. But you're not done here. We had a, a not 0.6. And I needed this to be like 6.0. So I'm going to move that one unit over. Because this number got larger when I moved that over. I need to make the exponent smaller by the same amount and report this as 6 times 10 to the fifth. Just two more to do. Uh, and again, I'm doing the fraction ones because that's where people have the most issues, usually. Um, divide the numbers and divide the exponents completely separately. Now, 7.5 over 2.5 without a calculator, oh no. But can you do 75 over 25? Yes, you can. It's 3. So, since the decimal's in the same place, this is also 3. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Right? Negative 2 minus 6, and I'm doing subtraction. So here I have 3 times 10 to the negative 8. This is 3.0. You don't have to write the point O unless you want to. Um, technically, I think you should only write the point O if that relates to the precision of your measurements. So don't get excited because I told you to write the zero. Uh, follow significant figures when there are measurements in error. And the last one, here's one that I just really don't want to do by hand. So I'm going to uh, think about this in terms of scientific notation. This is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 to the fourth. This is 1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 3. This is 3 times 10 to the negative 3. And this is 2 times 10 to the negative 3. So all together, what can we do? Uh, well, why don't we do this? I have a 10 to the negative 3 on the top and bottom of a fraction. I'm going to cancel all of those out. Uh, then I am going to multiply the 3 and the 2. So here it's going to be 6.6 .6 over 6. Uh, and I have a 10 to the 4th. And I have a 10 to the minus 3. Just writing out an extra step. I, you don't need it here. And then uh, that's going to be 6.6 .6 over 6 times 10 to the seventh. And that does reduce more, and I just wanted to show you how much of a, a fool I am to uh, need a calculator to reduce that, but that reduces to 1.1. And so you can stop there uh, with this one. But again, I think that's a lot easier than the other two options, which are multiplying those by hand and writing out the zeros, or typing the whole dang darn thing into your calculator. Both of those less good than just writing it in scientific notation, and then the only thing you need your calculator for is simple division tasks. All right, folks. I think that's it. It's been fun. I hope you've learned something about scientific notation. It honestly doesn't come up all that much in Math 4 or Calculus, but when it does, you really need to be prepared for it, and it's just something you should know. Please leave your questions below. Uh, email me or, or anything else if you have uh, any issues, and I'll see you guys next time.